Welcome, children. We are back to hear more of the story of Moshe. Remember, he was told to go and stand in front of Pharaoh and ask him to let the Hebrews go. Well, on the long way back to Mitzrayim, Moshe met his brother Aaron, who came alongside to help him. When they reached Mitzrayim and spoke with the Hebrews, the people couldn't really believe they would ever be free to leave, because they had been working so hard for so long. Moshe told them that Yahweh had sent him to help them get out of Mitzrayim. But he himself was not too sure that Pharaoh would listen. Even though Yahweh had promised to show signs to Pharaoh to make him believe, it sure would take a lot of signs before Pharaoh would believe. But Yahweh wanted the Hebrew people to see what he was doing, so they would be encouraged. The first thing that Moshe and his brother Aaron were to do in front of Pharaoh was to take Aaron's rod and throw it on the ground. When they did, Yahweh made the rod turn into a snake. Pharaoh asked his magicians to do the same thing. And do you know what happened? When they threw down their rods, they all turned into snakes too. Well, we know Yahweh is more powerful. The snake that used to be Aaron's rod ate up all the magician's snakes. Pharaoh didn't care. He just wanted Moshe and Aaron to go away. Yahweh told Moshe not to be concerned because in the morning Pharaoh would go down to the river and Moshe was to meet him there. Moshe was to take the rod, hit the water and it would turn to blood. That's exactly what Moshe and Aaron did. The next day all the water turned to blood and it made the fish die. Oh dear, poor fishes! They died just because Pharaoh was stubborn. There was blood everywhere, so no one could drink any water from the river. And boy, did it stink! Woo -hoo -hoo. Well, wouldn't you know it, there was already nothing to drink with the river being blood. But silly Pharaoh had his magicians do the same thing. Now why would he go and do something like that? Not very smart, if you ask me. He just wanted to show off and convince Moshe that his magicians were just as good as Yahweh. After seven days, Yahweh told Moshe to go back to Pharaoh and try again to get him to let the Hebrews go. Moshe was to tell Pharaoh that if he didn't let them go, Yahweh was going to make frogs come out of the water oh, and get into everything. Pharaoh still didn't care, so Aaron stretched out his hand over the water and frogs came up. Well, you wouldn't believe what Pharaoh did. He asked his magicians to see if they could make frogs come up too. I don't know if this Pharaoh was very smart. I certainly wouldn't want to see if there could be more frogs. There were already frogs in the ovens and the bowls and even jumping on the people. Pharaoh just said, OK, just ask your Elohim to get rid of the frogs. So Moshe said, name the time and my Elohim would get rid of them. Pharaoh said, tomorrow. So Moshe prayed to Yahweh and the frogs died too. Ugh, first the fish, now the poor frogs. There were dead frogs everywhere, piled up high. And you thought it was stinky before. Well, now there were smelly, dead frogs everywhere. Double gross. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as Pharaoh saw the frogs were gone, he changed his mind and didn't let the Hebrews go. Well, Yahweh knew this was going to happen, so he had Moshe tell his brother Aaron to take the rod again and hit the dust of the earth so that it would become gnats or lice. 
Aaron did, and this time when that silly pharaoh asked his magicians to do it too, they couldn't do it. That's a good thing. It was bad enough with all the extra frogs. Who wants extra gnats? The magicians realised this was no magic trick and that Yahweh was making this happen. But Pharaoh still didn't care. So Yahweh had Moshe tell Pharaoh that next there was going to be flies everywhere. They'd be all over the land of Mitzrayim. But this time, not in Goshen where the Hebrews lived. Yahweh was not going to make the Hebrews suffer just because Pharaoh was stubborn. So that's what happened. There were flies everywhere. But they did not go into the land where the Hebrews were living. Well, now Pharaoh had had enough and told Moshe, Fine, you can go and worship your Elohim here in the land. Just ask your Elohim to make the flies go away. Moshe replied, No, we have to go into the wilderness to worship him. So Pharaoh said, Fine, but don't go too far. So Moshe asked Yahweh to take the flies away, and he did. Do you think Pharaoh finally stopped being stubborn? No, not yet. But Yahweh knew that, and he told Moshe to warn Pharaoh that now he was going to send a sickness that would make all the camels, donkeys, sheep, cows and horses get so sick that they would die. But only the animals on the Mitzrayim side would die. The Hebrew side would be okay. Oh no, more innocent animals are dying. Good thing the Hebrew animals didn't die. Pharaoh sent someone just to go and check and see. And sure enough, not one of the Hebrews' animals had died. But even seeing that, Pharaoh still didn't let the people go. This time Yahweh told Moshe to take some ashes and throw them up into the air. The dust went everywhere, and it made a painful bump arise all over the Mitzrites and on the animals that were left. Even the magicians had bumps, so they had to stay in their rooms. Oh, that's no fun. Maybe now that the Mitzrite people were getting some terrible things happening, they would talk to Pharaoh and try and get him to listen to Moshe. Do you think Pharaoh heard? No, of course not. He was as stubborn as ever, and he still didn't let the Hebrews go. But Yahweh already knew Pharaoh was going to be this way. He used Pharaoh and his stubbornness so that year after year people would hear these stories and recognize that Yahweh is who he said he is. Moshe told Pharaoh that the next day there was going to be hail coming down from the sky. He said, Make sure you bring any workers and animals into the houses so that they don't die, because it's going to be very bad. Well, some of the Mitzrite listened and put their animals and workers away. But some who were stubborn like Pharaoh didn't bring their workers and animals inside. Moshe stretched out his rod and hail started coming down hard. There was thunder and fire. It was really bad. The people and animals that were still outside all died. The trees and nearly all the plants died. Some of the plants did manage to survive, as they had not got very big yet. Well, you would think that after all of that, Pharaoh would let the people go, but no. Of course not. He was as stubborn as ever and said, No. But Yahweh already knew that. <laughs> well, children, a lot has happened, hasn't it? Yahweh promised to help the people to be able to get out of Mitzrayim. And there is still more to come until then. But we will have to leave that for next time, when we will see you again for another exciting Torah portion. Shalom.